All right. This still works. Hi, everyone. It's really a soggy Sunday stream, so I'm very much in you know, uh, home uh, attire. But I haven't worked on Aga for a bit, and it would be nice to get it to um, to a state where we can add a readme on it and call it a beta rather than an alpha, something that people can use. Now, giving some time for people to show up. I'll check just Twitter. Hey, Strad. Yeah, you get to see the round trip time back to my browser. what's left to do. <sighs> so there's the whole thinking about how to make a agent work, but I think that should be the next stream where we stop and, th and think through um, properly the um, uh, have the next stream I would like to write a replacement for um, my use of pass uh, and that will probably require an agent so we can probably think through that UX then uh, also um, I have a fantastic name for the fork of pass which will be passage I am way too happy about that um, but today uh, I had a to-do list um, but also uh, soundtrack uh, how's the audio, everyone? Let me check the settings. Make sure that it's using the right mic. Okay, cool. Great. So apparently I had comment I did not push, which, why did I not push it? Uh, refactor parse identities file. Uh, so I refactored the common age parse.go. Let's go look at it. Um, Why is the scrolling so laggy? Yes, code will do weird things from time to time. Anyway, um, so now it just opens the file, um, reads it all with a limit reader into a byte slice, um, actually checks uh, if it hits it because limit reader does not actually return uh, unexpected EOF error. It returns just EOF when it hits the limit, which is something I hate. Uh, because the result is that you think you just read it all and actually you hit the limit. But yeah. Um, and then it does the scanning thing, uh, skips the line with 
with a hash and then if it finds a line that looks like pen it just passes the whole contents to parse ssh identity if there was an error continues at this point the idea here is that an error can occur before a begin line and if we do find a begin line we still tolerate it because technically pen is specified as being something that you can just stick into a message at any point so yeah uh, it then tries to parse the line as a x2519 identity if there's an error it sets the error otherwise it saves it blah 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 there's an error turns the error and no secret keys there. and parse ssh identity is actually literally just I get parse ssh identity i love when things stick together like that Or pedantic. Um, well, no, that's package format. So uh, Uh, now, what next? Uh, test vectors for interop would be nice. Um, there's armored messages, which we discussed with uh, Strad and he implemented in um, uh, the Rust implementation before uh, implemented in Go, which I truly suspect that the Rust implementation right now is significantly nicer than the Go one, which means I've been slacking a lot, but um <laughs> uh, but yes um, we should uh, catch up with that um then but yeah i think that what i want to do next is password uh in password protected um ssh keys because most people have password protected ssh keys and they should be able to use them um <clears throat> sorry still in the frame let's see okay now um it, encrypted ssh keys what uh oh i remember why i wasn't doing this oh no yeah because there's a problem with encrypted ssh keys and it's that i'm not a of the APIs when I tried to use tried to use them and somebody should really talk to these I don't know maintainers of the go crypto libraries and tell them to do something about it huh? <laughs> uh, okay so oh also there are 15 different um, SSH key formats um, Recently, OpenSSH even added support for PKCS8. So now there's one more. Um, so I think that there's PEM encryption, PKCS8 encryption, which gets encoded with PEM, but it's not PEM encryption. And then there's um, the OpenSSH uh, key encryption format, which I think Xcrypto just doesn't support. So I suppose what you're seeing today is... Um, yeah, what you're seeing today is probably going to be the making a contribution to X crypto SSH. And then I suppose we'll have to use a replace to use it before it gets code reviewed. Um, okay, so I get parse SSH identity. This is, we'll have to think about the API to propagate the passphrase. And also this is the part where we have to figure out whether whether a key, um, uh, whether a key is actually needed, because we don't want to ask you for the password or passphrase of all your keys if we don't need them. Um, so that too. 
so there's both uh, API on the Aga side uh, work and uh, work on the um, X crypto libraries. Um, from the chat, why does the parser continue with uh, malformed uh, secret keys? So what it's continuing over here is that it's allow it's it keeps looking for a begin line because malformed here means that it's not a ag private key uh x2559 private key but it might just be a preamble that comes before a, a pen a private key the problem is that here we're just given a file name and we don't know whether it's um ag file uh, key uh, key file which has to have every line either start with a hash, be empty, or be valid. Or if it's a pen file, where the only rule is that in somewhere in there, there's dash dash dash, dash begin, and then dash dash dash, dash end, and the things in the middle parses base64 somehow. Pen is extremely flexible, regrettably. But I felt like we should go along with it, also because the PEM API in the standard library, it doesn't let you really mm, strictly parse per, PEM, partially because strict PEM is not a thing. Uh, so the API will just skip anything that it doesn't recognize until the first uh, block that it does recognize. Not a fan of that, but that it's more that I'm not a fan of PEM. Um, so here, parse SSH identity, SSH dot parse row private key. And now we're in XCrypto. So there's a function that con checks for encrypted block and returns an error saying cannot decode uh, encrypted private keys. So what this is, proc type encrypted, is pen encryption. Pen encryption is an old horrible thing that still uses MD5. And which I think does literally nothing about um, passphrase stretching, which is why it's the worst of the various options. Uh, so we have support for the OpenSSH private key format, but doesn't look like for the encrypted format. So encrypted block just checks for PEM encryption. Let's see if parse private key with passphrase. Yes, yes, that. Um, okay, so it's just a wrapper around parse row private key with passphrase. So it does some PEM decoding. Okay. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no. Right. Now I remember why I hated this. Also, why is this function not this function? I don't want to know. Uh, okay, so what this is doing is that if this 
is not an encrypted passphrase, it will just... Oh boy. If it's not an encrypted passphrase, it will just parse it and ignore the, the passphrase. I am not a fan. And then uses the curt pen block, which is the horrible function that still uses um, uh, MD5 somewhere. CBC. Blocks are padded using a scheme where the last n bytes of padding are all equal to n. Okay, that's the standard tab. Um, yeah, if you're thinking, wait, but where is the Mac? Yes, I don't think there is one. Oh boy. Okay, this is a bad format. I understand why OpenSSH really didn't want uh, to. Yeah, wow. Um, this is bad. This is all bad. Um, Okay, the format is bad and we can't do anything about that. Um, the API is also kind of not great, so let's do something about that instead. Um, I'm thinking that we change this. Mm, can't change this here. Um, how does GoHack work? Does GoHack. No, no, no. Yes, I always wanted to try this. Brew goget is just a script I have that gets something and installs it uh, with brew in the cellar so that I can unlink it and manage its versions with uh, Homebrew. Oh, this is fun. All right, we could just work out of my X crypto thing, though. Um, I definitely have an XCrypto directory, but eh, I wanted to try go hack. So let's do that. And then in theory, probably killing gopples. If now we try again, going to for parse row private key, it's not working. <laughs> VS Code is being weird. And let's see where this file is. Yeah, it's in Go Hack. This is fun.
Okay. Um, now, what can we do about this? Oh, PCS eight, really? Oh, it does. It doesn't support PCS eight encryption. Okay. Now, I'm thinking that nobody calls a function that takes a passphrase with the idea of the passphrase being ignored, right? Nobody wants that. And if nobody wants that, then we could just change that behavior since it was not documented. Could say, you know, it was a bug. Um, it says if the password is wrong, it returns this error. But it should also return an error if the file is not encrypted because let's think about how it works in our case. Like we, we want to know if the file is encrypted. Right, because if it is, we want to then ask the user uh, the passphrase if needed and, and then use it. By the way, we don't have a way to know which key is which uh, if they're using PEM encryption. If they're using PKCS8 encryption, there's a chance. This is hard because we need to know the public key if we can before... Do we even support encrypted PKCS8? This is one of those times when I find an um, issue in the issue tracker and find out that I closed the, the feature request myself, isn't it? Yes, 2014, 2017, you commented. <laughs> yeah. Audio feedback. Uh, kind of weird because it's my phone is pretty far, but I'll put my phone further. Mm -hmm. Make sure there's nothing touching the mic. <sighs> okay. So there is a library. <laughs> But it would be kind of embarrassing if I had to go use a library. Oh, hi, me from a month ago when I was looking into this. Yes. Right. OpenSSH added support for PKCS8 as an optional format for storage of private keys to disk. Um, the OpenSSH uh, native key format remains the default, but PKCS8 is a preferred format to pen. Yes. Uh, if interoperability with known OpenSSH software is required, as it may use a less than secure key derivation function than PEM, because yes, PEM sucks.
um, question from the, the chat about um, from one of the maintainers of an Android password store. Hi. Um, how portable the Finnish implementation would be in terms of being able to run without any assumptions like keys always be in a certain location. I definitely wanted to be a flexible binary that you can just run in whatever uh, scenario and um, so I would definitely want um, if you can shell out to a binary that should definitely work and go compiles to Android uh, fine. Um, so yes, uh, if that somehow doesn't work, open open an issue. What uh, what kind of um, audio feedback are you getting? Uh, I'm not sure what it could be. Also, I'm running out of battery because my charger broke. A light techno beat? Question mark? Like a cell modem. Uh, I truly have no idea what it could be. Like this is where I have all my servers and there's a bunch of antennas in the back. So who knows? Um, but also I can't just turn off the antennas. Uh, so. From one to ten, how much does it disturb the, the stream? Yeah, we'll have to live with it today. I'll uh, try to investigate it um, later. Okay, so back to us. Oh God, this is a lot. Uh, we are fairly deep into the... Oh, hold on. Is it when I put my hands on the table by any chance? Like, now? Because it... No, okay. Then it's on my watch. Um, Alright, sorry. We'll have uh, to, to live with it. I moved everything that I could think about. Okay. All right, so PKCS, it, this is quite the, the yak to shave. Um, let's focus on what we want. We want an API that will tell us if something is encrypted, or at least an error, a specific error that will tell us if it's encrypted. And then if it is encrypted, um, we want a way to decrypt it with a passphrase. And possibly we want to get the public key out um, without decrypting it. Now let's look at this library and what API it has. It has parse encrypted private key. Oh, question from the stream, uh, what's Gopals? Uh, Gopals is the um, uh, language server implementation for Go. 
and it's amazing it's uh how uh, th how all of this works like when i hover something and when i uh come and click on something and it jumps to the finition all the auto completion it's the actual engine that does all that work um for uh, vs code So it supports RSA, PKCS, OpenSSH, DSA, OpenSSL, and you see DSA private key, error incorrect password. Uh, okay. And then it allows you to format as OpenSSH or classic pen. This does not actually help as much, huh? because it only returns a signer and it doesn't let us uh, and it doesn't support encrypted PKCS8 either. Okay. So the behavior here, I'm very willing to change. Something like um, if uh, encrypted, uh, if not encrypted block or not, this uh, simply return not an encrypted key. I think this we should change. but this only helps us with PEM encryption. And it doesn't help us taking the public key out. We may also have to just look at the .pub file. Okay, let's look at the uh, OpenSSH and PKCS8 uh, formats, mostly at the OpenSSH one, because I don't think anybody will be using um, the um, the PCS8 one, it looks like they just added support very recently and nothing uses it by default. So, uh, this value of buff is never used. Interesting. Wait. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, by the way, what you just saw was a static check uh, reporting an issue and um, that's integrated into Gopals thanks to the analysis framework. It, it's super cool. Uh, every analysis uh, now follows the same API, so you can run VET and uh, static check and any other analysis that you might also write um, as, um, as a pipeline. Uh, you can see it in my make cert uh, repository. I have a file where I just that I just go run instead of running actually go vet and actually static check, where I just import all the analysis passes from vet, all the ones from static check, and then I make a just long list of analyzers and then just multi checker main analyzers, and that's it. Um, it's all very, very cool. This is uh, the work of a bunch of my colleagues uh, at, at Google. Anyway, I, I digress. Let's learn about the OpenSSH uh, key format. Let's see if there's a reference somewhere here. I thought I had seen it. Yes, there we go. OpenSSH has this beautiful um, protocol dot formats, um, docs, where they explain like all the things how their ChaCha 20.1305 implementation works, how their agent works, how their SSH signature for, uh, works, their U2F, which by the way, I'm so excited about that I might resume the newsletter just to talk about these two things. And if I start to talk about them on the stream, we are not going anywhere with code. So back to protocol. Slowly. Okay. Okay, um, also what repository is this? Yeah, probably the right one. Overall format, header, a list of public keys. Oh, this is sweet. Yes, yes, very good. And an encrypted list of matching private keys. Good. 
that means we can you know know if the um, public key uh, is the if the private key is the one we want before we decrypt it so it has a now of magic then a string of oh, this encoding is the ssh encoding the ssh wiring wire encoding which is defined in some rfc that i can never find every time i need it anyway kdf name kdf options number of keys n public key one public key two public key n encrypted padded list of private keys okay so it's just a sequence of stuff kdf options for bcrypt salt and rounds concatenated and represented as a string Oh, oh, SSH has basically its own ASN1 thingy. Um, the list of private key common pairs is padded with the bytes one, two, three until the total length is a multiple of the cipher block size by. Sure, why not? Um, what's the cipher? Cipher name. Okay. Wow, this is weird. Before the key is encrypted, a random integer is assigned to both check int fields. So successful decryption can be quickly checked by verifying that both check int fields hold the same value. Why? Why would you not just stick a this is a private key string in there and check that. I. Sure. Okay, whatever, 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 whatever. Moving on. By the way, in classical cryptography, this was bad. This is what got the Enigma decrypted. Uh, But yeah, um, so yeah, this is also then encrypted OpenSSH format because it says here yeah, for unencrypted keys, the cipher is none, the KDF is none, and the options are none. Like, cool. Okay. Um, this is the kind of stuff I would want to implement with uh, CryptoByte. And if it's not implemented with CryptoByte, I, we might just rewrite it because I've been talking for a long time and I haven't started writing code. Oh, wow. There's actual, actual unmartial support for the SSH wire format. Oh God. Oh my. I might want to rewrite all this with um, Cryptobyte. Yes, I absolutely want to rewrite all this with Cryptobyte, but that will be another day. Um, I'm actually taking a note about this. Um, also, somebody should really fuzz SSH on Marshall. Ooh, I did not want to see that anyway. Moving on. Um. <laughs> the microphone is picking up what? <laughs> There's actually no sound in the background too. Oh. 
I, I, I see. Yeah. No, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm slow. I didn't catch a joke about yak shaving. Um, yes, we're very, very far in the yak shaving. Uh, <laughs> wow. It's Sunday. <laughs> All right. So we have cipher name, KDF name, KDF options, num keys, pub key and perf key block. Pub key? Singular? Uh, so this only supports one key because I suppose a Marshall does not actually support, uh, you know, variadic formats. The Marshall APIs are kind of bad. ASM1 and Marshall was probably a mistake. It looks like SSH and Marshall is also not great. All right, and this is the part where it checks that it's actually uh, unencrypted. You should also check that the KDF options are empty, but mm, whatever. Um, I guess we could do it with rest. Rest is what this is what supports mm, doing we could like parse everything up to here, leave this as rest, then loop uh, once for each public key and then do the same for private keys, but yeah, who cares? Check one, check two, key type. Oops. Check one, check two. What? Oh, and then it's just SSH keys in that format. Okay, I'm not a fan of any of this. Um, okay, so we want a parser that re really just stops here and just returns the public key. If it um, if it's encrypted, I suppose that there isn't a public key format, so we can't just make an API that takes a public key because now this is the private key format indeed. Mm. Ideally, what we want is to parse an encrypted private key, get back something. Ooh, how does the um, signer look like? So this is raw private key and that doesn't help us, but the non raw one returns a signer. which has a public key um, interface and a um, method and a sign method. We could return a signer, which is actually a type that um, where you have to call the method um, decrypt. Well, decrypt is the same as decryptor, um, unlock uh, before with the passphrase before using it. I don't hate that. I don't hate that at all. Um, I, this is too much to dump into X crypto. So actually let's, um, 
undo the go hack uh, and just make our own internal package and actually start writing code now. We will make our own internal SSH keys package. Okay, a problem is that the PEM encryption version totally do, do not work like that. Um, uh, just one sec, sorry. Okay, the problem is that instead the PEM one, uh, we don't have the public keys, but usually they're stored in the .pub um, file next to it, which means that our API needs the file name, which we don't have by the time we reach the PEM block. <laughs> oh boy, I now remember why I had dropped this. Um, we're one hour in and we haven't started writing code. Office ID. How does a dot pub look like? All oh, right, like the authorized keys. If anyone has any ideas from the chat, I appreciate them. Because I feel like we can do that cool API where the signer has a dot unlock and returns an error on, from sign until you call it, but it, but public key works um, until um, for this format, but we can't for the um, uh, PEM encryption format, which a lot of people will still have on their disks. Like, I don't actually care about PCS8 that much. Um, and also, if we're assuming that there's a .pub file anyway, might as well use that every time. But that has to be in the API caller, it has to be in the AGE package. In which case we wouldn't actually need our own package. We would just, well, no, we still need to implement uh, encrypted uh, private keys, but that we can actually do in X crypto at that point. I 
makes me sad because we have a better format where we could actually encapsulate the parsed file correctly. No, so the drawback on creating our own package is not to add complexity. It's that um, the API we would make for our package only works for this cute format that the new SSH format where the private key contains also the public key. But most people won't, will not have that. So we need a fallback anyway on looking for the .pub uh, file sitting next to it. Uh, basically in here, ID at 255.19, uh, is a file of the format we just looked at. Well, idea RSA is probably, actually no, it was also generated as an open SSH private key, uh, but a lot of people will have um, an older open, uh, open SSH, uh, which, what? Oh, they switched to the default format. Um, oh, geez. Uh, dash M. Right, we're not using a, I'm an idiot, hold on. Uh, no, okay, it's still using the default, that as the default, but now with dash mpem, Now, finally, there we go. It's using this stupid encryption format, which is the MD5 unauthenticated one, um, where we don't know what the public key is until we look at the pub file. But by the time we are parsing a private key file, we do not know the... Uh, we did like the API is so much uglier if you have to pass file names so that we can then go next to it to find a public key file. So I'm kind of stuck. I kind of hate it. 
I guess this complexity belongs in the command line tool, not in the Ag API itself. So the Ag API itself will just take uh, uh, identity, which has already been decrypted, um, and we will assume that there's a pub file, and if we find an encrypted private um, key, we generate our own wrapper uh, that when sign is invoked, it will, when decrypt is invoked, will go back to the user and ask to decrypt, ask the decrypt passphrase. Okay. All right, so let's All right, I want to write some code. So how about we go back to the plan of uh, just adding the corruption support to the standard library for um, OpenSSH keys. And for now, we just decide that PKCS8 was added in OpenSSH 8.1 and nobody uses it, so we don't support it. And we look at what happens if people scream, uh, which is my plan for basically everything. Like, uh, if I don't know if something is needed, eh, we just don't and see what happens. Okay. So actually down to business. Um, let's close a bunch of files. So a question from Chad is, does OpenSSH even read the .pub uh, key? Because it only has dash a identity. Well, it must, right? Because in, in, open, uh, in SSH, you send your public key to the server and the server says, yes, yes, that one, that one public key I like, send me a signature with that. And then you send a signature. So if you have an encrypted, we can check. So I'm going to try, like, it needs to, because otherwise it wouldn't know which one to use. I'm going to try SSHing uh, with um, an encrypted key to a server that does not support it. Uh, I don't know what's SSH server. Um, um, I mean, this is one where I actually have access to, but. It did not ask for the password. You see that. So it, somehow it must know that the public key is not useful. Like actually let's add the dash V. Will attempt key. It means it's sent it. How? It must have read the pub, the pub file. Offering public key. Here we go. It can't generate the public key from the private key because we didn't give it the passphrase. So it can't decrypt the private key. It works with the old, uh, with the new format because it has a plain text public key followed by encrypted private key. but. So now if instead we SSH to a server that will accept all the passphrase, um, oh no, actually it will reject them all. So this will just say, 
yes, here's your public key. Now, actually what we can do is, so this sent that. Now we remove the dot pub, or at least we move it. And now it's asking for the passphrase. All right. Cool. All right. We and I suppose if we don't give it the the passphrase, it did not send the public key. And I assume that that's instead not true for um, keys that are in the new OpenSSH format. And I honestly don't want to make two separate API paths for them. I don't. So we will also look for the .pub file in the command line tool, which makes me sad, but that's how it is. It is what it is. Okay. Um, well, it is what it is. So let's add support for encrypted um, private keys. Okay, so we want to reuse some as much code as possible from the parse open SSH private key stuff. Like all this stuff, it should all be reused except this part. I think we can make it just take a function. Well, first we have to read up about the KDFs, which I didn't see explained. The KDF is used to derive a key. Okay. Um, thank you. Which ones do you implement? Not helpful, not even close. Um, uh, well, I guess we're looking at this code. Okay, so apparently it supports bcrypt with AS-256 CBC or AS-256 CTR. Um, and it's exactly how you would expect it to be. Wait, what? The new format has no authenticated encryption? Why? Why? 
Why? I mean, I can imagine the discussion going like, oh yeah, but you see, uh, we don't actually need encryption for um, authentication for encrypted keys. Once you have them decrypted, uh, like, I mean, what, what, what matters if you can change a private key? Who cares? That's always, that always goes wrong. Arrgh. Uh, extra bcrypt IV uh, block. Let's see what this function is. It parses options and so, which is exactly what it says somewhere here. Uh, so far, so good. And then it just takes the things. Okay, that's reasonable. It starts with the key and then the IV. Okay, fairly straightforward. Now, um, Yeah, I think we take a function here, which decrypts the private key stuff. Yep. Um, it should take cipher name, KDF name, KDF opts. and should return a decrypted byte slice and an error. And this is the um, uh, decrypt function. With uh, Let's see, the default implementation that we will call um, an encrypted uh, uh, plain text, an encrypted open SSH key, sure. Oh, and it also needs to take the private key block. And we move this logic in there. the double check for this. And then we just return the private key block as is. You remove this stuff. Wait, what? 
Okay, so. It's a hell of a signature, isn't it? Yeah, okay, I kind of hate this. What does it look like with a larger screen? Well, not terrible. Not great either. I don't want to make a type for this, though. It's like... There's probably a padding oracle here. Ah, <laughs> which could have been avoided had it used an, an AAD with authenticated encryption. I. Mm, mm.
Why does it make a copy? Is that necessary? This should have checked that E is correct, but who cares, I suppose. One sec. Sorry, trying to figure out what mm, like my plans for this evening. Um, as I mentioned, this is a very casual Saturday stream. Um, So now we have a function uh, that will do all the boring bits of parsing. Also, I feel like we should have checked num keys. Before we finish, um, we wrap this up, we also need to make a return a specific error when the file is encrypted. Like this one needs to be a recognizable error. No, this one needs to become a recognizable error. Anyway. Um, um, All right, fine, I'll move this into a type.
So how I think I'm going to do it here is that um, the caller can just get a decrypt function that is a closure over the passphrase value. And then here we just uh, do uh, with switch on cipher name and KDF name. That's the first time I make that mistake. Weird that nothing was calling it out. Blah 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 blah. Bcrypt PBKDF? No! No! Why? Okay, let's drop the switch because this would get too complicated. like to find a reference for this because what uh, one sec uh pp kid yeah no Okay, um, open SSH, bcrypt, kdf. Oh, hey, yes, yes, exactly it is.
No, no, I, I want a reference to a dock. God damn it. Not to the source. We're going to the source, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> a slightly modified PBQDF2. I regret this. I already regret this. At least their their source is usually readable. Looks like it actually only implements AS256 CTR, so I say we only implement that. Yeah, it is bcrypt or nothing, so that's good, but... <sighs> I'm sure I prefer to look at the decryption, which I assume is this one instead, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure this is fun to code with, but okay. <laughs> wow. Um, that's going into the source. Also pretty sure that this isn't checking that it's empty at the end, but okay. Not gonna stress about that today. Ah, let's look at the implementation of this thing. Oh, it's an OpenBSD thing. Oh, I seen this before. I saw this. It's what they changed the um, file disk full disk encryption scheme to 
after I published the blog post where I was like, I lost my OpenBSD full disk encryption password, but turns out it kind of has a very easy to crack hash. So I just went for it. Oh no. Oh no. I, I, I just, I, no, 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 so finally somebody, oh, hey, you just, um, Oh, hey, there's a blog post about it. Oh, software crypto, there we go. But bcrypt is a key derivation function. I pain. Oh, that's uh, this is trolling. This is. Tr <laughs> okay. I don't I don't think I got it. By the way, it didn't become the default until, like, after. <laughs> I... <laughs> 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 oh, 
Okay, cool. <laughs> I should read this anyway. <sighs> Lol. Oh, it's using signify. <laughs> and previously it was just, I think, HMAC. Yep. Anyway. Oh no, it was uh, PPKDF2, uh, but it was very low number of cycles, something like that. Um, okay, I'm terrified um how how many layers deep are we Well, the good news is that DChest is a Go contributor, so I'm just going to grab this code and then ask him on the CL uh, for permission to submit it under the CLA. Oh wow, this is before we switched to Git. Oh god. Okay. 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 I internal package internal package right that's the only realistic answer right oh hi that should make it easy um
I mean, it would be fun to re-implement, but honestly, you're not on the stream for that. And I've got to go in like 40 minutes. So yes, we're re we're rebuilding this code. Where are we putting it? SSH. change this I don't know how to use this. I want to see the code. Ted who doesn't believe in, doesn't matter. So, doesn't believe in, uh, he doesn't believe in um, CAs. And so we're just gonna use HTTP, because sure. I ain't, I ain't fighting that today. Um, Hmm, yes, this was me. <laughs> I'm very happy about this. Ah, uh, when did that happen? When did Tadu uh, get on the HTTPS train? Anyway.
Okay. Back to us. We now resurface <laughs> from this terrible journey. Um, also, sorry about this. Um, of course, like I will ask for permission before actually mm, submitting this. Uh, actually, I'll make a comment right now so that uh, nope, that's the wrong header. Um, this one. Fuck it, we don't want, we don't care about PCSA. And there's another issue for it anyway. There, this way I'm not gonna forget about to do not submit. Um, and back to us. Why is this wrong? Okay, so. First, we need to finish actually using here. Okay, this took a while. Um, all right, uh, key and IV. How many bytes of IV? Uh, if it's going to be CVC, it's going to be 16.
Master Salt Rounds Killer. Okay, so actually we need to do all the parsing first. Uh, so we need to parse KDF hops. Salt you in thirty two rounds. Thank you. In the source, I've only seen the Wait a sec. I bet there's no padding. Eh, whatever. Might as well check it. Um
we have to care about globbing this yeah Okay, this might work. Um, let's make sure we didn't break everything first. Come on. Yay! Assuming this has a test. Um, oh. Narrator. It didn't. Oh, no, 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 we're just searching wrong. It's okay. We can die. Our whole test file. Is it there? Oh, where's the test data? In a package? Test data is a package? I don't think I've ever seen that. I'm not saying I don't like it, just never seen that. This is exported. Okay, I actually have opinions about this being exported. Um, oh, okay. Um, Alright, so there are tests for this, so if we had broken it, we would have noticed. Now let's just slap in there our encrypted one. Uh, 
So we'll need to make one. Um, Hmm, no, I'll never say. Uh. That's weird. I don't mind it though. That way you you know immediately which one is which. tests and they don't work because we haven't actually rigged that up yet just checking that it's actually going through them Okay, how do we detect that here? Um, it's giving the wrong error message because it's uh, hitting this line because it's not a pen encrypted um, block. Um, we just look at this because if it's that it's not pen encrypted right Isn't it nice when you have a nice uh, um, API and it just works? We just check that if it's a OpenSSH private key and so we just use this function and if it's not an encrypted key, it will automatically return an error from here. Now, of course, we run the test and it doesn't work, but Damn. Cute. Um, cool. Uh, this is suspicious, so I'm just going to double check by... Oh no, it actually checks the check-ins. So that worked. Let's just double check how the test looks like. 
goes through the keys, it does parse, uh, and then it even signs something with it. Um, no, no. And PEM encrypted, um, oh, sorry, yes. Uh, PEM encrypted OpenSSH um, uh, are not a thing. I don't think it will ever generate that OpenSSH private key if it's PEM encrypted. Um, we can try to force its hand by doing a PEM format. Um, Add to five five nineteen key. Yeah, I think it just refused. <laughs> it just ignored our pen thing. Yeah, this is not a pen encrypted uh, blob. So if it says OpenSSH and private key, it means it's OpenSSH encrypted. Okay. Um, oh wow, it even verifies with the public key. How cool is that? Well, looks like we've got it. Um, I also, before uh, cleaning up, wanted um, to finish this off by making sure that this file is a known, f nope, nope. This file is a known, ah, uh, God. This is a known error. And I'm thinking maybe just return x509 uh, incorrect passphrase. It is less um, meaningful. I'm thinking we make these two separate comments. So one is this what? Seven weeks ago? No no no, okay. First we fetch and replace. Uh. 
Okay, so with this one, we don't change the behavior of the API, we just add support for the thing. Yeah, lol, that's not happening. Um, uh, Right, let's then do the other way around. First, we um, commit the API changes, which are easier because we just have to like drop this part. Um, nope, nope. Yep. Nope. Uh, yes. Yes. Nope. 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 Nope, nope. And this one will be uh, SSH. Uh, reject unencrypted keys from
and we actually need to go back and do the part um, that we said we would do. Uh, which is this. I don't love this. I'm thinking something. This error might be a type that also includes a public key. And that's how we surface the public key. Yeah, I've seen Russ Cox do this in uh, X mod. Um, I don't have it in here. 
That's some DB. No, which one? In note. Yeah, boom. There's one. I am very happy about this API.
All right, and then we need to patch up this and write a test for it. This looks like a bug in static check, right? Mm-hmm. 
so. Thanks, thanks to the chat. This one's probably a bug, but I already have a to-do on it, so. Uh, yes, thank you, I never re-added. Right, because it's not there. Um, here. Heh, <laughs> I have to rewrite. And done, and not done. Yes, yes, I, 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 I don't care. Ta -da. One. And two. And I'm gonna finish these tomorrow at work because it turns out I ended up just doing my job. <laughs> so yes, lol. We did not do anything on Age, but well, I did do work on Xcrypto, so there's that. <laughs> Alright. Thanks everyone for watching and for catching my bags. Uh, in particular as I was getting tired.
I think I'm out. Um, <laughs> Strad, yeah, um, the only way I had to catch up was to find the most annoying thing that you can't find a, a pre-written parser for and go for that. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, uh, the follow-up here is pretty simple. Uh, I'll get these CLs merged and um, and I'll... Um, I'll add that couple tests here. I'll make sure that mm, Dimitri is okay with us using our, um, his code. And then I'll just uh, update the X script to Nage and we'll take it from there. And then using it in Nage should be fairly straightforward. We use the, we check the error. If the error um, is one of those, uh, we, uh, we look at the public key. If it has already the public key, we don't need to look at the .pub file. Otherwise, we go and parse the .pub file. Um, if we don't find it either uh, in either, I think we... I don't know what we do. Um, but I like that it got much, much simpler to support both .pub and the public key because it will be just in the same five lines where if it, the error is this and public key is nil, just go find the file. So we didn't have to implement completely separate logic for them. Uh, it's taken care of by the API. And then from there, we'll just make a identity wrapper uh, for Age that the first time you call sign uh, actually goes and asks for, um, for the, the passphrase so that if it's not the one we need to use, we'll know. Because in the AGE format, we have a short hash of the public key uh, and we can just compare that and decide and use that to select which one to use. And we'll just need to have a, probably a interface upgrade on the identity interface for the short hash or something like that. It should be a fun exercise in which, you know, things snap together. And PQCS8, I think we don't care about. Like, whatever. Use the OpenSSH format. Why? why? Um, yeah, and that's it. So maybe I'll stream sometimes ne next week, um, before the weekend, just to uh, do these finishing touches. This was fun. Any questions in the next uh, minutes before I go? What questions do you have? Do I regret reusing OpenSSH keys? In fact, I don't. Like, it was meant to be, it was a very calculated spend of complexity. Like, I spent a lot of the complexity budget there because I think it's going to be a good um, growth hack, if you will. Um, and I get, keep getting asked, but hey, I want support for signing in Age. Um, and I'm usually like, can't you use something else? Uh, well, but I want to use the same key for encryption and for signatures. It's complicated not to do that. And like, you know, fair enough. OpenSSH just added support for signing, which I need to write a whole uh, newsletter about. And so if you want to use the same key, use the OpenSSH uh, tool for uh, signing, use AGE for encryption with the same key and done.
Cool. Folks, lovely as usual. Thank you for being uh, such a nice community to, uh, to work with. And I'm so proud that we haven't had to ban anybody yet, by the way. So. Cool. Bye-bye. Have a good evening.